Hello, in this video we are going to talk about Fresnel's assumption. In the last video we discussed in detail about Huygens Fresnel principle which states that every point on a wavefront is a source of secondary disturbance and the secondary wavelets emanating from different points mutually interfere to give out the diffraction pattern. Now, before we get into the details of Fresnel's class of diffraction, let us first understand Fresnel's assumptions for this class. We have a source S which is giving out a spherical wavefront as you can see by a circle and it is obstructed by a slit and only the fraction of wavefront is allowed to pass through. So we have this slit. Let us call it AB. And at a distance which is finite, let us draw a screen and call it XY. Now let us join this wavefront to screen. So I have a line which is joining center of the source to the center of the screen. And we will call this on the screen O and here it is called as C. And the upper and lower point of the wavefront which are obstructed are called as M and N. Now we want to observe effect at a point which is off center. In that case, we will have to join this center of the wavefront C to the point of observation on the screen. Let us say this line is making angle theta with the horizontal. Now let us discuss in detail Fresnel's assumption for effect of wavefront at any given point. So here our point is P and wavefront which is allowed to pass through the slit is MN. So the first assumption is a wavefront is divided into large number of zones called as Fresnel's zone. For a spherical wavefront, these zones are of concentric nature. If the wavefront is planar, they are of kind of stripes. We will study the properties of these zones in great detail later. These are imaginary zones for which center will be decided by point of observation. Here, right now, if we are observing from O, then this yellow dot is the coinciding point for S source, C wavefront and O the point of observation. If the point of observation is away from the center, in that case we will have to draw an imaginary line joining that point to the source and center of the wavefront will not remain at the center of the slit. So the effect at any point P will depend upon the combined effect of all these zones. How many zones will come in a particular wavefront will depend upon the distance of the screen and also the wavelength of light. Then second, effect at a point due to a particular zone will depend upon distance of the point from the zone. So farther is point from the zone less is the effect. So it is dependent on depends on distance from the zone. Third, it is very important. Third, it will depend upon obliquity factor. Obliquity factor is defined as k which is a function of theta 
which we have already uh, considered it is the angle made from the x axis and it is proportional to 1 plus cos of theta so now it tells us the effect of wavefront with respect to angle we know that the effect of wavefront is maximum in forward direction but Huygens discarded the wavefront which was going in backward direction but with obliquity factor that can be justified as the theta keep on increasing the wavefront's effect keeps on decreasing let us see how so first at point O how much is our theta at point O theta is 0 degree so this 1 plus cos theta term would be so now it would be proportional to cos 0 is 1 so it would be 2 if we want to see the effect of this wavefront in the direction perpendicular that is towards A or B then theta would be 90 degree and k of theta would be proportional to cos theta would become 0 it would be 1 that is the effect at 90 degree becomes half to that of the effect in the forward direction then if we want to see the effect in backward direction theta would be 180 degree cos of 180 is minus 1 plus and minus 1 will cancel out and this would be proportional to 0 so obliquity factor takes care obliquity factor proves that there cannot be any backward traveling wave so these are the three important Fresnel's assumption let us uh, have a recap of it in Fresnel's class of diffraction Fresnel's made three important assumptions for explanation of diffraction first a wavefront is divided into large number of zones called Fresnel's zone resultant effect at any point will depend upon the combined effect of all secondary waves emanating from the various zones second effect at a point due to a particular zone will depend on the distance of point from the zone and third it will depend on obliquity factor which is also called as inclination factor with reference to zone under consideration which is given by 1 plus cos of theta where theta is the angle made with the horizontal axis so that is it for this video in the next video we will discuss in detail about Reynolds zone theory thank you